G'day guys and welcome to Aussie Griller. Now I've got a different type of episode for you today. I'm going to show you how versatile a rotisserie can be and how to use it on many different types of barbecues. Now I'm going to start with the good old hooded barbecue. Now these are very easy to rotisserie on. This is the barbecue I'm going to use and this is the rotisserie kit I'm going to use. Now here I've got a butterfly leg of lamb which I've rolled up and it's seasoned with lemon, rosemary, salt and pepper and garlic. And I'm also going to cook some vegetables on the rotisserie with the meat. So I'm going to begin by putting the vegetable basket onto the shaft, followed by the counterweight ring and then one of the prongs. Then simply put on that lamb, followed by the other prong. Now for starters, I'm going to gently rest it in the barbecue hood to check the balance of the meat. And as you can see, there's a heavy spot on the bottom. So I'm going to add a counterweight. So just screw it in and position the counterweight to the opposite side of the heavy part of the meat. Then insert the shaft into the motor. And simply turn it on and fire up your barbecue. Now as you can see I've got a drip tray in here and I'm only going to use the burners on either side of the drip tray. Indirect cooking with the lid down. Now watch your temperatures here. You want to roast it at about 200 degrees Celsius. And then once it's got about a half hour or so to go, just put those vegetables into the basket. Careful not to burn yourself and then clamp them down tight. Adjust your counterweight as necessary here, guys. Fire it back up. Put low heat on the burners under the vegetables and then cook until done. And there you have it, guys. And that is looking absolutely beautiful. Now onto the flat top barbecue. There are literally thousands of these in backyards around Australia. They don't have a hood. They don't have rotisserie brackets. So to rotisserie on this barbecue, I'm going to use one of these kits. It's an adjustable kit. It's extremely versatile. It even has skewer slots. And I'm going to use this for the rest of the examples in this video. So here we've got some chicken wings, a bit of olive oil, mixed herbs, salt and pepper, some paprika, and some garlic powder. Very simple rub here guys, mix it all together. Now I've got a basket clamped onto the rotisserie shaft, so it's simply a case of putting your chicken wings in, then as before, clamping them down tight, Add the rest of the fittings. And I'm going to set this to one side while I adjust the spit kebab kit to fit this particular barbecue. Then simply fit the motor and the meat. Fire up the two burners under the meat and get it turning. Cook until golden brown guys and they look absolutely awesome. And this will only take 25 or so minutes. Alright guys, now there's a recent trend towards low heat grills and there's a number of them on the market. So I'm going to use this lid with the rotisserie kit to get extra heat in. So I'm just going to fit up the sides for the lid. So you can see what's going on there. And I've got a nice red wine, garlic and pepper roast here. So simply mount it on the rotisserie shaft with the prongs. As I've done before. Then insert it into the rotisserie kit on your barbecue. Fire up the grill full heat, 
and you'll need to maintain full heat the whole way through the cook here. Then just place on the lid and cook until it's golden brown and caramelized on the outside. Just like that guys, a very simple and delicious option. Now time for some fish. So I've got a basket mounted on that rotisserie shaft and I've clamped in a flounder, just like that guys. Now the benefit here is fat free fish cooking. Fire it up nice and hot to get a crispy skin without the extra grease. A flounder will only take about 25 minutes or so to cook as well, so very quick. Just season with some salt and pepper and enjoy. Now, last but not least, my favorite, the charcoal kettle. So heat up some charcoals. I recommend using baskets here because you can move the heat in and out from under the food as required. Leave a bit of a gap between them. This will reduce flare ups. So just put the grate on your barbecue. And I'm also going to choke this fire for about two to three minutes just to take the sting off the charcoal because the meat will be quite close to it and you don't want it to burn. Another one of my favorites here guys, the rotisserie chicken. Now the breast side is the heavy side, so I'm going to mount the shaft up towards the breast side to help balance the weight. Now with the drumsticks, you can tie them up with twine, but I'm going to go one better here and just push them in under the prongs, just like this. And make sure they're clamped on very tight. So as you can see, those drumsticks aren't going anywhere. Now just check your weight balance and adjust as necessary. Also ensure that the wings are tucked in behind. This will stop them from flopping about. Then simply put that bird on the spit. Then just sit back and relax until it's done. Now the great part about rotisserie chicken is it starts smelling great about five minutes into the cook. Mouth-watering stuff, guys. Now for some sausages. There are options here, guys. You do not have to grill them. So mount them into the basket, clamp down tight, and then just prick some holes in them with a corn cob holder. Now there are two benefits to cooking them like this. One, they self-baste and will give you a nice crispy skin. And secondly, a lot more fat will render off than when you're grilling them. Now I'm using the lid again here guys to give an extra crispy skin. And this will take about 20 or so minutes. And they look absolutely awesome. Smell awesome too guys. Then simply serve up on some bread. There's nothing like the good old Aussie backyard sausage sizzle. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. So as you can see, there are many, many options when cooking with the rotisserie. You can even use it on your compact barbecue or a campfire. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time.